To fully appreciate the inevitable unfolding of events, one must begin by placing the events in time. The year is 10,191, 57th year of Emperor Shaddam IV's rule. To be precise, Location. the day of We Paris. are on Arrakis, otherwise known as Dune, the planet of sand. This is the only known source in the entire universe of the essential spice. Now for the main protagonists. First, Duke Leto Atreides, planetary governor of Dune. He has just been double-crossed by the Emperor and slain by the evil Baron Harkonnen. His immediate family have either been killed, arrested, or have escaped. His wife Jessica and his young son Paul, henceforth Duke, have fled. At this point, it is best to call him Paul Atreides. The unknowing would say that his was a desperate plight, but the man who will become known as Muad'Dib has already begun to shape his fate. His mission is to round up the Fremen, a people tucked away in the desert who stand up to the Harkonnen. Through them, Paul will regain his kingdom and avenge his family. Mother, don't untie your distiller. It will recycle your body's own water much more effectively. It's all we have. I can see Fremen settlements. Can you smell something strange? Uh, that's one of the sandworms. It's close by. If we step on the sand, it will detect us. I'm going to look for the thumper. It'll put the worm off our scent. Mother, I'm going to find the thumper. Wait here. Time is against us. We must hurry. I'll follow you. We must get to the Fremen site. Time is running out. Mother, your steps are too even. You'll give us away. Try to avoid the areas of dark spice. They slow you down. I don't like this place. As long as we can hear the thumper. Come on, quick!
look at the pretty picture, nephew. A bull of extraordinary strength has flattened Paul's grandfather. I, the most powerful man in the Empire, have killed his father. One of Arrakis's unforgiving storms has swept the child away. An awesome combination of power has rid us of the Atreides, uncle. Raban, you must recapture Dune. Its surrender has been very costly to us. Our investment must pay dividends. May we be bathed in torrents of spice. <laughs> Don't forget to remind the locals that the Harkonnen mean business. Let them bury themselves in a stinking cage while we make our fortune. The Fremen are more than just a scattered bunch of natives. Our soldiers report that they are fearsome fighters. <laughs> Do I detect fear in your eyes, Raban? The Fremen quake in their boots at the mere mention of my name. <laughs> of course. The beast, Raban. Flood the desert with their blood. The Fremen know that the most ferocious storms can be traced to the nethermost regions of the desert. Sometimes a harmless gentle breeze on the sand can turn. Paul, meanwhile, was planning retribution for his father's death and a way to reconquer Dune. Stilgar had found the Atreides in a siege bastion in the desert abyss. This is where Jessica gave birth to Aaliyah, Paul's sister, just before Duke Leto's death. Jessica had become the Reverend Mother of the Fremen. Paul was now called by his Fremen name of Paul Moadib. Inside the siege, he was adding the final touches to stage one of his plan, an all-out guerrilla attack on the Harkonnen spice harvest. We will require more than my tribe's worth of warriors to cut off the Harkonnen spice supply. Stilgar, how about summoning the other tribes? My men are ready to go to war because my word is gospel. As for the other siege dwellers, they will need assurances that a brave man is in command. What's our first planned mission? The obliteration of a carriole and a harvester, 200 kilometers in a northwesterly direction from here. I'll go it alone. That's suicidal. When I return, news of this accomplishment will spread around the sieges and the desert's nadir. Then we can count on many more recruits. I refuse to accept these terms. I shall proceed with or without your approval. I wouldn't put it past you. I need equipment. Find Baron. He's in charge of weaponry. He'll supply you with an SOS launcher, a vital object. You'll also need a crease. I believe the Chani is looking into that. Chani? The Atreides are brilliant strategists, but naive on other matters. Come and find me when you have everything. I shall take you to the ambush site. You must make use of your trip to the siege and talk to the Fremen. Knowing that you are near does wonders for their morale. Kalu, how was your trip to the siege? We had to time our movements to avoid Harkonnen reconnaissance patrols, but it was well worth the effort. Stilgar asked me to organize the relaying of information between our patrol teams and the siege. Is there any news on the resumption of spice harvesting? From what we are told from several sources, Raban has to respect the high quotas governing the harvesting of spice, much more so than during his first term here. He's taking risks. His harvesters are sinking their teeth deep into the desert bed. If it were up to me, I would strike now. Some say that you're the man in the statue. Some say that you're the man in the statue.
Shani. I see you've managed to make a workshop. The plants are beginning to grow. We'll soon have a true insight into Fremen Heaven. Leap Kynes would be proud of you. To pick up where my father left off with his plantation is one thing. What you're doing quite another. To organize and unite the Fremen is a massive challenge. Your father saved my life when the Harkonnen launched their offensive. I promise to repay him. Water will flow on Dune. Water and clear air. Trees as well. I would have loved to see your world. I can't take you there, so we'll just have to recreate a part of it here. The water reserves are increasing slowly. We shall be long gone before Dune is fertile. Look, as long as the Harkonnen don't know about your people's plan, there's every chance that it will succeed. I have something for you, Moadib. A crease. You already showed your mastery of it against Jamis. The blade is made from a sandworm's tooth. One of Shai Hulud's teeth. Yes. Only you can carry it. It is the Fremen's secret weapon. Should a stranger see the blade, it will claim his blood. If you lose it, it will automatically self-destruct. Thanks, Johnny. Some say that you're the man in the statue. Some say that you're the man in the statue. Some say that you're the man in the statue. Some say that you're the man in the statue. Some say that you're the man in the statue. Paul Muadib, people say that you're an Atreides Duke. You're the first nobleman I've met. Little sister? Whatever you may think, I am not a little baby. Remember I was in Mother's womb when she drank the water. I share all the knowledge of the succession of Fremen Bene Gesserit mothers. Hers included, Big Brother. Given the scope of what I know, I could easily call you Little Brother. Paul, did you have one of those wakening dreams? Mother, I know we've already talked briefly of these visions. Don't you think it's high time you filled me in? Destiny's siblings create a web and you see the results. Time and space intersect at these points. The interstellar navigators use spice to work their way through space-time and to pilot their long-distance aircraft. You're equally sensitive to the presence of spice. I'm convinced that it's responsible for your dreams. You can no doubt visualize some key moments whose ending is still undecided. Are they fragments of the future? Can I change them? Is that the power of Kwisatz Haderach? Kwisatz Haderach? Excuse me, Paul. I have to mark your sister's memory tests. Subach ul kahar, Hara? Well enough to know that you've come to parrot my pots, Paul Moadib. However, these sandheads have already gobbled up the first batch of kulan mishmish. I have not come for your food. You never told me to whom the Harkonnen armor in your kitchen belongs. Jemis. He brought it back as a memento of a foray near the Great Shield. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to bring that up. Nobody is to blame for my husband's death. I sometimes think to myself that it was all in vain. If only I could have avoided it. I know, Paul. His passing away might well have left me at the mercy of men with completely different characters to yours. I am fortunate in this respect. Jamis was a friend. He taught me the value of life. May God bless you, Paul Moadib. I will say aloud what the others are whispering. I believe you are the Messiah. May the Corioli spare you. You've never used an SOS jammer before. No. 
The spear missiles that we deploy are not potent enough to destroy a Harkonnen carriole. Its engines are too big. The only way is to hijack a harvester as it collects spice, and then have it picked up by a carriole. Blocking the sand-removing nozzles turns the harvester into a self-timing bomb, with enough force to destruct the carriole. I understand the function of the jammer in disrupting the harvester's transmission mechanism and cutting off all communication links, but why the SOS signal? That's where it gets interesting. When activated, the jammer emits a false distress signal. The carriole comes to the rescue of the harvester, reasoning that it's encountered a sandworm. Clever. But that implies that the saboteurs only have a limited amount of time to block the sand-removing nozzles. Every plan has its drawbacks. Here, use it to good effect. Have you ever seen a carriole on fire, Muadib? We will make tracks at nightfall. The worm will act as our transport until we get to the ambush point. Has Baron explained how the SOS jammer works? It jams the harvester's communication network and sends a false SOS to the carriole. Good. Your mission is split into three parts. First, you must climb onto the harvester and hide the jammer. You must tread carefully, as there will be almost certainly a military presence around the harvest area. Stage 2. Once the SOS has been launched, you have to work your way inside the harvester and locate the sand-removing nozzles. These must all be shut down to create the state of overheating. Thirdly... Let me guess. Escape from the harvester before it is taken away by the carriole. Otherwise, I'll be stuck inside when it explodes. Your intelligence will only be of any use should you survive. Use this projectile pistol. Stilgar, don't worry about me. You're as good a judge of character as your father was.
The spice and equipment losses are high. Are you sure your units are providing proper protection? But the desert is teeming with Fremen! Appoint a new officer for the harvests, and tell him what has happened in this saga. I should have aimed for the legs. Our leadership styles are not so different. Ever since you left Staban to ex-charge, your smugglers have been under guerrilla attack from the Fremen. In contrast to my former boss, I don't envisage any obstacles to a partnership with the Harkonnen. Less of a crackdown on your smugglers by my troops. In return, your total cooperation in the battle against the Fremen. That's odd. What's up? The rate the Harkonnen harvesters are accumulating spice doesn't tally with the amount filling up their depositories. They don't put all the spice into official depots. My father mentioned secret stashes. Why conceal the spice? To pull the wool over the Emperor's eyes, thus enabling Baron Harkonnen to add to his wealth with stolen spice. If we are to beat Raban, these secret depots must be found. Where is Raban hiding them? Mwadib! I've worrying news about the arrival of a planetologist. The Imperium is sending him to take over from Liet Keens to resume research in the experimental station. I want Chinese right away. There are more and more Harkonnen Ornies in the remotest desert zones. You'd think they have advanced bases. But we would have located any new bases. There can be only one explanation. They're relying on the smuggler's help. Staban Tuek won't let us down. Look at all the commission and spices that we're giving him. Staban Tuek isn't the only one. Other smuggling outfits have less qualms when it comes to joining the Harkonnen. Hmm. We need to investigate further. I'll get scouts into the relevant areas right away. May Liet protect you, Paul Muadib. An Imperial Planetologist is going to work in your father's old experimental station. I haven't been back since his death. His data cartridges on the Terra Firma plan are surely there. If the Imperium discover that we're contemplating changes to Dune... The Imperial Sardukars will join the enemy. The Fedaikin Fremen are too few in number to withstand open warfare. My father gave me a special data cartridge for safekeeping. It contains the reports he sent to the Emperor. They're fake and confirm that any notion of creating dry land on Dune is unfeasible. We must go to the station and replace the real reports with these. No reason for both of us to go. Kynes also had a laboratory to test plans for the Terra Firma blueprint. I shall destroy them while you swap over the data. I hope the new residents haven't arrived. I know that Baron has recently made alterations to a Mala gun. It's as silent as a shadow. It's just what we need. Can you get the cartridge and the Mala from Baron's storeroom? I'll see to it. Stilgar should also be notified before we leave. You can do that. I don't think he'll be too thrilled to see us both go. May Liet protect you, Paul Muadib. Hera's kitchen alone is worth the trip to the siege. I know what you want to talk to me about. I've been told of the arrival of the planetologist. This crisis could prove fatal to the Atreides' house. Whatever happens, the Emperor and the Harkonnen must not join forces against us. 
Mother, my main concerns are for the Fremen, Kynes, and my promise to him. To muster soldiers is one thing, getting your royal title back is another. I will prove you wrong. Paul, don't take any unnecessary gambles. Chani needs me. This poor man has single-handedly carried a soldier's body back to the siege. The more I see these men leave and return from attacks on the Harkonnen positions, the more insignificant I feel. I vow that you will witness the defeat of the Harkonnen with your own eyes. But I don't want to watch. I want to play my part. I'm worth more than many of these new recruits combined. Baron, Chani has sent me to collect her father's data cartridges. It's strange that you mention them now. I can't find them anywhere. I'm sure I saw Aaliyah go into the storeroom. It couldn't have been her. It would be unacceptable behavior for the daughter of a reverend mother. My sister can be extraordinary in a number of ways. I also need the Maul pistol that you've modified. Right you are. I have specifically designed it for tricky assignments behind enemy lines. It hardly makes a sound. Not be looking for that cartridge, Paul? It should be in Baron's storeroom. It's hard enough for me to get noticed by my more illustrious elder brother. Let's just say it's a kind of reminder. Moreover, between you and I, how long is it since you've practiced the voice? Not since the Fremen took us in. Precisely. Stilgar's ban. No voice in the siege or its banishment. Mother says you can only use it in times of grave danger. Fear of death must open your mind. That stinging sensation. What are you doing? I am preparing you. I can't move a muscle. You've injected me with the contents of your gum jabbar. It wasn't metacyanide, but a slower working poison. The antidote is in my second gum jabbar dose. Give it to me now. Aren't you forgetting the magic words? Mother was right all along. You would have let me die. Kill the Quisit's Haderach. You are no different than the hundreds of other souls that haunt me. Now I know why the Fremen call you the Obscenity. Stilgar has forbidden you to use the voice here. However, you can call on it outside the siege walls. When death knocks on your door, it's amazing what our survival instincts can bring out in us. Are you sure you're human after all? Don't thank me for the test. Can I be of service to you, Paul? Charney and I are paying a visit to Kynes' experimental station. Do you honestly think that I will warn you of the danger involved? Charney knows the area better than anybody, and I am the siege's leading warrior. No, and certainly not alone. We both know that if the Imperial Sardaukars are on the scene, we can't carry out our attack successfully with a division of the Fremen army. They're not ready. I cannot allow it. If we allow the Emperor to find out about the Terra Firma plan... Yes, yes, I know! It's our only option. If anything were to happen to you... We shall return unharmed. When do you intend on leaving? 
immediately. Do you intend following me around all day? It's a security measure. We have reason to believe that the Fremen have been here in the absence of an Imperial representative. Animals. In one of the Imperium stations. Terrible. Go patrol elsewhere. Sardaukars. They're going to make life difficult for us. I'm off to find the plant shoots. The data cartridge should be inside Kine's apartments. This way. Good luck. Suspicious movement. I'm processing the target.
This machine goes back to Jihad Butlerian's days. It's going to be hard work. Next time I hear a cough, I'll have one of those Sardukas shot. If I kill this man, the Emperor will send Sardukas to bolster the Harkonnen. I must lure him out of here.
Flight permission not granted. Unidentifiable object. In the name of the Emperor, land at once. Will it make it to the siege? That all depends on the will of Liet. It would have been easy to spot the Fremen hideouts in the desert from the air. All it would have taken would have been some surveillance satellites. The decision for sending satellites into orbit lay with the Guild of Navigators. The Freeman paid for the refusal with an obscene amount of spice. No royal family, not even the Emperor, could spy on the desert. The Freeman relied on Stabin 2X smugglers to deliver the spice payments. As long as their frigate linked up with the guild's long-haul carriers in orbit, then the Fremen's lair could not be flushed out. Stabin Tuik's frigate has been intercepted by the Harkonnen. How long ago? It's been a few days. We don't know how long the Guild of Navigators will wait before accepting the Harkonnen offer. There could be observation satellites in the sky at any moment. Another method of payment must be found. Ideas are running thin. We have no means of reaching their long-haul carriers in orbit. We'll have to wait for them to land on Dune. I can only see one way of meeting a guild member. The Shield Citadel. Their frigates stop off regularly to refuel. That's a fortified town. The garrison is formidable. Correct. It won't be easy to get inside, but it's the only option I can think of at the moment. Chani visited the place a few years ago with her father. You should talk to her. I'll go and see her. Our latest missions have enabled us to seize a stock of Harkonnen laser guns. Go and see Baron to get yours. You're letting me go on a mission without a fuss, Stilgar? I am neither narrow-minded nor am I a fool. The Guild will refuse to deal with a simple messenger. But the Fremen Messiah, whose deeds are revered in the four corners of the planet... You're about to go. Me too. Has it anything to do with the guild payment? I must meet with a guild delegate at the Shield Citadel. It's a maximum security zone. I once escorted my father there in his capacity as planetologist. He was fearless. Do you know anything about the area? Only the Harkonnen are allowed entry. You also have to negotiate the security gates positioned at every section of the base. Well, that's a start. I have to get on with the plantation program. Kalu will accompany me as far as his home siege. They're depending upon me to deliver a spot of paradise. The weeks ahead are going to be long and lonely. I shall miss you. Be careful.
Hurrah? What is it? I'm sorry, Paul. I've none left after you. Can you tell me where that Harkonnen armor in your kitchen came from again? Jamis brought it back after a raid near the Great Shield. Do the coded bracelets still work? It's ages since I touched them. I need to use them. With your permission. You're off on another mission. Look at me, stuck here cooking for the soldiers. Muadib, help me out. Mention my name to Stilgar. My sons are old enough to manage without me. There's nothing to keep me here. I want to take part in the fight. I can't promise anything, but I will talk to Still. Thanks. Take the armor. At least that's something useful. I'm searching for the camouflage claws. For safety reasons, it's essential we cover the wind traps outside the siege. I think what we've got here are some Harkonnen lasers. Correct. In perfect working order, too. Have you used one before? Only in training. Are you aware that you must never fire a laser at a shield that has a Holtzman effect? Unless your idea of a final farewell on this earth is an atomic explosion in your face. I know. I pray that the Guild hasn't yet sent satellites into orbit. If they can spy on us from the sky, we've had it. Alia, that doesn't mean you should stop reflecting on the litany. Paul, I'm beginning to worry about the whole thing. What exactly are we supposed to fear if the Guild are not paid? It will be the final nail in our coffin. They rely on spice for the interplanetary journeys on their long-distance carriers. If we fail to supply them, they will turn to the Harkonnen and the Emperor. The Guild, the Harkonnen and the Emperor in unison. We would be powerless against such a triumvirate. I pray that the Guild hasn't yet sent satellites into orbit. We must move fast. The next frigate from the Guild arrives in a few days. I'll come with you as far as the Citadel's security perimeter. You must use the coated bracelet on your armor to move around freely once inside the Citadel. As with all Harkonnen fortresses, you will be stopped at the security gates. These gates are protected by pentashields that are impossible to break through. That is, unless the correct disactivation code is entered into your bracelet. The gates and codes are color-coordinated. The diode's color, for example, will allow you to get past gates of the same color. Be sure to have the correct color code to breach the security gates. There should be charging terminals inside the base, which will allow you to change the bracelet codes. Got it. Okay, off we go. I love them. They are all overtrained veterans. Have you quite stopped laughing? is completed. Security systems can resume normal activity.
You're new, aren't you? Only the pilots have an entry pass for the defense tower, not dog bodies like us. with no emblem. The presence of the Imperial Sardaukars is making me nervous. Is the flight map safely tucked away? In the defense tower. The Sardaukars cannot get into that part of the base. Let's go before they ask us questions about our destination. If the Sardaukars are worried, that means there is a link with the stolen spice. These flight maps can lead us to Raban's secret depositories. Got to find the tower.
reserved for ambushing the target. We had expected such an eventuality. If you know why I'm here, then let's get straight to the point. Offering it in the middle of the desert is not exactly very tactful. Can you suggest an alternative course of action for our payment? The Ibad Mountains. They were once used in an attempt at desert colonization. The infrastructures are old, but they allow frigates to draw alongside one another. Most importantly, the Harkonnen cannot track them down. We can make the spice payment within two weeks. Fine. We shall honor our part. You did the right thing coming to see us so promptly. We are being inundated with requests for orbital satellites. Is that a threat? We would never upset our spice suppliers. Goodbye. For now. It must have been one deep. Spice has begun to weave its magic on him. He could overthrow us. We cannot allow the Freeman to control all the spice production. We cannot allow the Fremen to control all the spice production. Let's stick to our commitments with them for the time being, but let's look at ways of replacing them with one of the Imperiums. You're new, aren't you? Only the pilots have an entry pass for the defense tower, not dog bodies like us.
The archive terminal of the flight maps. If it really is an Orny from Raban's secret depot, its flight plan must be coded. Let's look at the code levels with the highest clearance. That one. No pilot's name, no Orny registration, just coded flight data. It's gotta be the one.
Be alert, Fremen groups have been spotted in the vicinity. The route to Raban's secret depositories. This would be the final blow for the Harkonnen spice harvests. The data coding is complicated. We could use the navigation map code manual. We know where it can be found. In the documents room in Arakin Palace. You sure? A secret agent of ours has just started work there. Hara is taking a big risk. Can you arrange a mission to the palace? Into the lion's den. Let me think about it. Paul, I have some bad news. It's Chani. She has been captured by Desid's smugglers. They intend selling her and Kalu to the Harkonnen. Then there's no time to lose. Their base camp is a few hours away by Orni. You'll need jamming equipment. I'll go and see Baron. It'd be a good idea to give the flight maps to my mother before leaving. That's a wise move. I'll take care of the Orni. See you shortly. Did you see Baron and Dame Jessica? Muddy, the Fedaikins carry your words to the four corners of Dune. Long may you live, Muddy. Long may you live, Muddy. Several messages from the Fedaikins that you have trained, Madi. They teach your art of combat in their siege. I don't talk with These smugglers deserve to die. This meaty dose leaves you a few seconds to sample the agony. Brother, do you have the right to taste deadly concoctions? Poison is the aristocracy's favorite weapon. Don't make fun of this exercise, Aaliyah. You must be able to recognize them in a split second. Oh, that's nothing compared to a hunter-killer, the favorite weapon of noblemen. There are ways of evading hunter-killers, too. They're attracted to noise and movement but they're only deadly when the target moves in their field of vision. Their weakness is the limit of their sensors. Dear Mother has taught you well, Paul. My God, Paul. I've just heard the news about Shani and Kalu. Spare me, Mother. You've never accepted my love for a Fremen, who is, as you put it, unfit for an Atreides Duke. How dare you say such things? I do have feelings. What affects you affects me, Paul. My concerns for your future have nothing to do with this terrible occurrence. I must find her. There's no negotiating with them. These smugglers are nothing like Stab and Tuex. They're rogue mercenaries who've been associated with the Harkonnen for a long time. They're unscrupulous and merciless. Look after this Redulian crystal. I'll pick it up when I return. I've prepared you a stock of radar jammers. 
the smugglers had the disagreeable habit of placing a network of short-range radar right around their camp. When a problem arises on the periphery, the entire camp is alerted. When infiltrating one of their sites, it's best to start by putting their communications radar out of action. All you need to do is place one of these jammers on each antenna. Thanks for the lesson, Baron. Long may you live, Maddy. An Orny is waiting to take off. Let's go!
What is it? Oh. Oh.
Shawnee. Paul, how did you get here? I'll explain later. Stilgar's waiting for us. How do I get into your cell? Through a great door in the cliff, but it's closed from the inside and there are several guards here. I saw their munitions depot outside. I'm going to give them a good reason to come out. I'll be back. Paul, wait. My cell is locked by a code. I haven't seen them key it in. I'm on it, but where's Kalu? The Harkonnens, they took him away a few hours ago. It's too late for him. I'll be as quick as I can. See what's happening. I'll watch the prisoner. I'm disappointed. I was hoping to win my new baby. Did you get the code? You can't get me out of here without it. Get me out of here, I beg you. Listen to me. 
We're meeting Stilgar at the top of the camp's highest outcrop of rocks. Run there as fast as possible. I'll cover you. My life is in your hands. Kalu, I thought it was all over for you. It very nearly was. Luckily, Stilgar spotted me. I just escaped from the Harkonnens, and they were tracking me in the gorges near the camp. Get in, quickly! Nothing can stop Paul Muad'Dib. Nothing, at least, that stands in the way of my desert spring. Forgive me, Madi. How embarrassing. But in all the excitement of the return, I've not had time to explain our capture. Kalu, you're a fine fighter. If they took you by surprise, it would have been the same for any of us. You don't have to explain anything. You know how to gain men's trust. Right now, I've got a woman on my mind. A hunter-killer. I'll have to reach my weapon on the other side.
What are you firing at? Quiet. Someone sent a hunter-killer into the alley. A Fremen traitor? How can it be possible? And yet, he would not be using a hunter-killer. It's no Fremen. I've not been paying enough attention. What are you talking about? We should warn Stilgar and the Fedekins. They won't believe me. The hunter-killer was activated near here. It has to be in a room very close to us. It's hunting me. That is not wise, but legitimate. Mishai Halud lend you his strength. Lock the door behind me and don't open it for any reason, even if you hear my voice. Paul Atreides is among us. I can't wait to see Baron Harkonnen's face when he sees your head. Let's finish it, demon. Oh, you've worked it out. So you are worried about the fate of Kalu. I assure you that he is in good hands. They will try to keep him alive as long as possible. In a few moments, you will pay for him, Face Dancer. Do you have a preference for the appearance of the man who is going to kill you? <laughs> Enough! This night will remain etched in our memories. Every Fremen will know that Paul Moadib overcame a demon. Any news of Arkeen? Good. Very good. Hera's obtained all the information needed for the infiltration. She's ready to receive us. But now, you must go and rest. If they've taken Kalu, they might know about our plans, and of Hara's role. They won't get a word out of Kalu. Believe me, Stilgar, Harkonnen interrogation techniques are nothing if not inventive. 
We shall leave as soon as you have collected the flight plan from Dame Jessica. Face reveals the strength of the desert, Mighty. Your visions don't seem to disturb you as before, brother. I'm learning to interpret them. That would terrify even a Bene Gesserit. <sighs> I'm as bad as you are on that subject. The Atreides are truly going to set this world on fire. I heard an insane rumor. It was about you going to Arakin alone. Just a vague rumor, Mother. Here is the Redulian crystal you entrusted to me. The face reveals the strength of the desert, Mighty. Victory against the demon has secured a place for you in the hearts of those who still doubted you. Every time I see this expanse of water, I think of my father, of the dream he kept alive here in the worst of the deserts, on the most bitter planet ever colonized by man. He didn't dream, Shani. He saw. Come back in one piece. Long may you live, Mahdi! Shai Halud will carry us under the cover of darkness. Horsemen of the Sands will watch for the signs. Just say the word. Hera will await you in the palace outbuildings. She will get you into the interior enclosure near to the gardens and the map room. <laughs> Reinforcements? To do battle with a mouse? <laughs> it seems that my great brother has lost the taste for human blood. They are elusive. Oh, poor Raban. With all his beautiful soldiers. <laughs> A mouse! <laughs> Don't hesitate to tell me if you wish that I replace you. Uncle, do you believe that there's truth in what he says? I stopped taking the Fremen lightly a long time ago, Fade. If Raban can just distract them, your poor brother has understood nothing of his role in this story. Let us rejoin our guests. See how, for a worm, he has wriggled well? How could they? If my uncle continues to treat our garrison with so much contempt, we will end up losing Dune. 
No more reconnaissance missions. Not a speck of spice has entered our stores for months. At this hour, the Emperor himself must know of our situation. The oh, fools. The cooperative Fremen has just died, but he had time to tell us about Muad'Dib's next visit. But according to what you just said, I should soon be able to ask him the question myself. You should not have come in person, Madi. Their veterans of the Sands are on edge. They've had to dismantle Kalu's network. Don't worry. I'll be careful. This secret panel leads to the palace's west wing. The map room is not very far, but you have to cross the gardens to reach it. Thanks, Hara. What you've done here is worth 100 Fedaikins doing battle in the desert. You're opening up the path of victory to us. Yahua Shwahada. I'll wait here. We'll return together to the siege. Many think that the Harkonnens do not deserve you, even as a spy.
Show yourself. Oh! Oh! Show yourself. Die! Say goodbye to your secret depots, Baron Harkonnen. Muad'Dib, you won't be rejoining your flea-ridden army. You will die here, Raban. 
kid, a poor kid, is leading the Fremens. Ha 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 ha. The thread of your destiny ends here. It is written, and I see it. Save your prophetic sermons for your friend Kalu. You'll be seeing him very shortly. I give thanks to the destiny that has brought us face to face this evening. I pray to be its instrument. I will drink your blood while savoring your agony. Yeah. <laughs>